Christmas. <laughs> okay, we're ready to go. Go ahead. Mike. We're ready. Okay, uh, like I said, during the past eight years, the rates have hasn't been changed. Uh, due to the increase with landfill disposal costs, fuel, everything, uh, I felt it was time to increase the rates a little bit, but not increase them to the point where it's going to drive away our uh, customers and people from the city from using our facility. So basically, what I did was I did a comparison. Uh, at both landfills that are local to us, Valley and Scottsdale, and found out at Valley, for example, they charge you $122 a ton. Scottsdale charges roughly $110 a ton. Now, what's different with a landfill is you can only dispose of a ton at the landfill. They don't break it down per pound or anything else. Uh, so what so I that's did, their minimum? Yeah. If you take anything less than 2,000 pounds, you're getting it. Exactly. You're, you're going to pay a ton. So what I did was, how it's always been done before is we broke it up uh, where the first 200 pounds were always tw uh, $12. Well, I changed it to 1250 It's a 50 cent increase just during that first 200 pounds. Then after that, uh, how we work up there is every 20 pounds uh, we charge you. Um, at the current rate, it's 95 cents uh, every 20 pound increments. I'm raising it up to $1.05, $1.05 uh, per 20 pounds. Make a long story short, over the, 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 the length of uh, making it up to 2,000 pounds, we're raising it only $10. So the new rate will be $107 per ton versus the $97. Or if you want to get technical, we, we charge 0 .048 pounds uh, or 4, 0 0.048 cents per pound. Right now it's going to be at 0 0.535 cents per pound. So. Um, I think it's just something good to do, just uh, rebound from uh, some of the cost off offsets. Good. Um, this is, is going to be on the, on the agenda next week. Um, I guess, um, as a motion for me to prepare an advertising ordinance. Uh, this is an ordinance that we would have to have advertised so we didn't have enough time to uh, prepare and, and advertise a notice for passage on the 8th. On the 8th, so we'll have to pass it on February, February meeting. Yeah. Hey, Jim, you want a coffee? You can have Julie's. I haven't been sworn in yet. I know, I'm not. I'm just giving you Julie's packet. Oh. So you can follow <laughs> along. I wasn't giving you her seat. I'm not, no, I was going to give you her, her packet. Okay. And the same sentiment that I just uh, stated is going to be uh, for item six as well. That's an ordinance. That one will be a little different. Um, the pay increase will be retroactive um, to the beginning of the year, but we pass it in February. Okay. So we can't do that with this, huh? We have to pass it and then it needs to implement the way. Because there's the 10 day notice requirement. I talked to Wayne this morning and I said I could probably talk to them and shoehorn it in in time. Um, but he said he'd prefer just to do them in, in February in case there's questions. Okay. Um, Madam Mayor, Council, uh, item two, three, four, and five were all reappointments. That would be a reappointment of Deputy Mayor, reappointment of City Secretary, reappointment of City Solicitor, reappointment of Engineering Firm. I do see that there is a um, Gibson Thomas Engineering Firm's uh, great schedule in here. So you can look at that. Those are the uh, items two through five will be added to the budget. Then, of course, uh, Zach had already spoke on item six. Is there any questions or any discussion on that? The only question I have, and you guys probably can't answer, are these rates for Gibson Thomas the same as last year? Or did they increase or anything? I don't know that. No. I got the Item number seven is day for the ECDB to discuss provisions of the of the city on choice of dates for the meeting January 
the second, 24th, 29th, and 30th, but I see January 22nd. I believe it was a agenda meeting. Is that the second one? Yeah, I talked to Wayne about that. He said it was going to, if it would be on the 22nd, it would probably be immediately before or after the, the agenda session meeting. And I, did you guys know what that's about? What, uh, yeah. We yeah. talked about it briefly, just as a, a follow-up suggestion. You know, we had, I, had, I had talked to Wayne one time ago about, do we need some kind of orientation plan for oh, new people at the council? Perfect. And I think sort of that's how that kind of came out of that. But that we all might benefit from just a, a guy to sort of go through the home world charter with us. Yeah, it looks like, yeah. <clears throat> Um, yeah, that kind of kind of follows in with number ten. What I want to talk to you guys about when we get to the after that. All right. Um, number eight, accepting results of financing bid for new truck and police car. Uh, is that your is that your truck to find? Yeah, yeah, that would be uh, those capital projects. Yes, both are uh, capital and uh, and uh, I don't think. We talked the last time about the, the truck um, that I put in for, for uh, it would be our last street department truck uh, with uh, upper fleet, uh, all of our uh, salt plow trucks to where we need to be with uh, newer equipment, uh, smaller equipment, uh, and we're also getting the same thing as we did last year, a uh, 2017 Ford uh, F550 chassis. So to be equipped with plow, uh, spreader, uh, dump. Uh, so. You know, with that, I think Wayne is still working on, I think the last time a couple uh, other bids or I'm not yeah, sure. So the, the vehicles are CoStar's vehicles, um, but the financing we're bidding out on both vehicles. Once we obtain the finance, you know, once we select the financing institution and the terms that they provided, um, we'll go through the Local Government Unit Debt Act requirements for carrying on new debt to the extent that we have to. That wasn't the late rule from the night to the classified section? Yeah, I don't know what day I posted that for, but I remember doing it uh, at the end of last week. And the police vehicle will be replacing the um, SUV with another SUV. Uh, so that, that uh, most of the equipment will yeah, er, yeah, pretty much 95% of the equipment is just going to transfer right over to the uh, new police vehicle. So it's going to just save a lot of money from upfitting to new cage and everything else. Have we ever done a study of, since you've been <coughs> switching on these vehicles like we have compared to what we used to spend? We used to, you know, keep the vehicles longer. Yeah. Are we saving a decent amount of money by doing it? I imagine we are. <laughs> Yeah, because if you look at it, repair cost per year, uh, if you go back just while I've been here uh, the past couple of years, uh, on my uh, repair item line uh, on highways or sanitation, just for example, every year we max that out on repairs. So say, you know, uh, highways is budgeted at 12000 for repairs and sanitation at eleven. we are using all that, if not more, to repair than if we were to go ahead and get rid of these uh, old vehicles, get new, we're not spending that money. You know, we, we are upfront for the payment, uh, the cost of that, but uh, the problem is uh, in the long term, uh, you know, we're, we're not having 20 year vehicles. So we can somehow, uh, I, I guess, find a good period of maybe between seven and 10 years to trade in the vehicles, then get new ones. We're gonna save a lot of money in the long run because we're not gonna to have to put the repair you gotta find that sweet spot. Yeah, now. Just like selling your car. Exactly. Now, roll up trucks, uh, it's a little different. You can keep those a little longer. They're, they're built a lot better. Uh, but our salt plow trucks with the uh, with the fourth, uh, their F 550s that we're using, uh, you know, I think seven to 10 years is the max you wanna keep one of those. Uh, you know, for one thing, they, hold, they, hold, they have a good warranty to begin with, so you're pretty much covered from about five years. So after that, uh, you know, it might be small repairs, but, but a lot of the stuff with the Ford, the F-550 chassis, we can do in-house. You know, we can repair those at, uh, at a lot cheaper cost. So. You get a warranty with a commercial yeah. vehicle? Yes. Right. Yep. yes. Hey, one thing I wanted to talk to you uh, also about is uh, when we switch these cars out, uh, per se, car, it's a bonus if uh, we can change out the equipment. Because a lot of times the, the manufacturers of the 
police vehicles or police vehicles, they'll change uh, styles of, of like the back seat or the side windows where you can't use the same bars from last year's model or so you have to go and uh, upgrade all your equipment so that's an extra cost but when we can switch out the equipment to, to, from vehicle to vehicle we save a ton of money. Also with the uh, with what Mike was saying, we wanted to get on like the rotating schedule where when a car is approaching its warranty uh, expiration and mileage for, for the year, we're ready to trade it in. So anything major like a transmission or something like that, power train would all be covered under warranty so we're not going to take that big loss if we're switching up. Now if we try to extend the life of it, then we're on our own. Like right. we need uh, lose money because we can trade it in at a higher value plus have a new warranty and, and not have it in the So that's pretty much where we are with the vehicles. We're trying to, I'm sure Mike's doing the same thing, we're trying to get on some kind of rotation with the vehicles where they fall into line with one or two years in the So uh, the, the, the fact that we can switch over the, the light bars and the, the cages and things like that are a big plus. Thank you. Um, accepting the resignation of Edward Kubasek from the planning board is in the packet. Uh, that would be on the agenda. Um, advertising a public meeting with council, revitalization, and various foundations during the month of February. Well, I was first of all, I before we even decide whether we're going to advertise it, I wanted to talk about it with everybody and, and uh, see if you were interested. I talked about this before. But then I thought with the you know with the potential council changing it would make more sense to wait until the new new year. But one of the things I thought about is kind of like almost like a to Eric's point um, um, an orientation is picking a it would have to, I think it would have to be a Saturday because we're probably going to need like four hours a Saturday morning nine to one or something like that here we can. Um, I don't care if it's open to the public or not. I mean, we could do it either way, but I don't care if it's open to the public. Um, and invite um, the foundations, representatives from, from the foundations that's, that support the city, uh, revitalization, um, park and rec. I even thought maybe if inviting um, April Cocos from the land bank and, 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 and giving them each maybe 15 or 20 minutes to kind of do a little bit of a presentation about what they're about, what their goals and objectives are, and then have just some open discussion so that we can all learn about each other and what they're, you know, because I know there's a lot of questions. I know there's a lot of land bank questions. I know there's a lot of questions at times with the foundations, with road vitalization, and with park and rec. So I thought maybe if we all sat down at the beginning of the year um, and and had this, you know, little orientation with all the, all the groups together, um, it might be beneficial to all of us. So I wanted to know if you guys were interested in doing that because if I don't have a commitment from you know the council, then I don't want to really waste other people's time if, if I don't get the whole council to to participate. What do you that? What do you? Are you interested or not? Yeah. I'm absolutely interested. In all right. What I'll do is I'll send out. I'll send you guys all an email tomorrow and and. and um, I mean, obviously we know what, what the Saturdays are in February, and try to get a consensus of a day, and then I'll, and then I'll um, or maybe the easiest thing to do would be to ask you to look at the Saturdays in February and see if there's, if there is one that will not work for you and let me know. And then I can go to these, you know how this is going to be, like herding cats trying to get all these people together um, to, to um, at the same time. But I think it would be, I also think it would be beneficial for, you know, you know, um, those entities to hear from us and as well as from each other. So I just think it might be a good good thing to do. I'll just need at least a, a week lead time yeah. to uh, advertise. advertise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll, it'll have to be a special meeting essentially. It'll have to be in the newspaper at least 24 hours prior to the meeting. Yeah, we'll have, you'll have plenty of time. I'll, I mean, I'm gonna try to get it scheduled first part of January so everybody can block off their calendars and you know, nine to one seem okay with you guys. If we're done early, we're done early. Every Saturday. I am too. Alright, get out of ten. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll do a ten to two then, I don't care. You're doing a lot of thinking. Time for that time you have to be looking. 
10.30, or do you mean you can be here at 10.30? Oh, uh, yeah. I can wait at 10. All right. I'll try 10.30 to, we'll, we'll just maybe have to bring lunch in. And have a, yeah. Okay. See what we can do. When do you want to give a date for the other one, Rosie? Oh, I don't have. I don't care. <coughs> oh, I'm How long? How long? How long? So I mean, so I was the twenty second. That way, we're not giving up the second night. <coughs> right. That right. Um, we did five thirty. Well, I guess the question I have is, what are we looking for from this DECD, DCED person? So this, this came into conversation because I took a class from them, and, and they were very informational. Did about, you take one of those? Yeah, I took them. I took it too when I became mayor. It was mayor about the financial aspect of things, just to learn a couple of things. And they had mentioned that they did something, and then I came and talked to Wayne, you know, mm -hmm. gave him the information that I received from them, and he said that he knows this guy from experience, and that he would be willing to come and help us out because, you know, some, well, I guess I'm the only one that hasn't been on council before, so I'm sort of learning as I go. And um, this guy is extremely knowledgeable, extremely yeah, knowledgeable. Yeah, I, I, I know who, I know who the guy, I know the guy too. And yeah, those uh, local government academy things are really good, I yeah. thought. Yeah, um, really, it was a good thing. So anyway, so, you know, I'm interested in it. I, don't want I guess my question is, is an hour enough? I think what he could fit it into whatever we wanted. It's what I was under the understanding. Yeah, because that's what I'm wondering. I mean, are we are we going to give him a topic or are we? I mean, I don't. I, don't, yeah. I think he's going over to charter, right? Yeah, that's sort of what this says the, for, to discuss provisions of the Latrobe City Home Rule Charter. So maybe he already has like sort of a, a pre-canned. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with the 22nd if an hour is enough time. I mean, I could get here at five, but I don't know about the rest of you guys. Um, let's find out. For, let's yeah. tentatively plan for the 22nd at like five, and then we'll ask Wayne if an hour and a half is enough. If an hour is enough, we'll just push back to 5:30. Okay. Anything else? Anyone else to ask? Um, does anybody hear any, have you heard anything about the debt clogging program? Uh, no. Well, I will tell you this. One thing I do know is the number, the debt coffee numbers were going down even before the debt coffee, even when the debt coffee was at Lincoln Road. They were declining um, just based on population. And the high school is has, I guess, a, a, another. Um, a, a junior high program, too, that they just started recently. The hockey junior high hockey program, or they're starting a junior high hockey, hockey program. Um, so um, when we looked at the financial numbers and the the declining participation in deck hockey over the past two years, and tried to project out to see if we could see that there would be any kind of an increase. We didn't see it, so it looked like we were going to be spending all that money for declining population, and then what? Um, and and they're just more and more interested in ice hockey in that hockey. So I have not heard anything. I had a park and rec meeting last Thursday. Um, no one said anything about it, so I don't know. What are you hearing? I heard there's people are going to Bell Vernon and somewhere else instead of up there. Well, I know that. Uh, well, I know that um, for the winter, um, the numbers were pretty much what they normally are for winter. Winter is usually their their lowest um, number, you know. And I don't know if it's because there is ice hockey going on or what, but um, the indicator I always thought was like in the spring. That's that was usually their biggest population, but I haven't heard. Uh, the last I asked about it, they said that their numbers were pretty much what they had been for this time of year in the past. So maybe that's changed. I don't know. Well, I told them, like I tell everybody, if you have a problem, come to the meeting, go to the meeting. Well, yeah, I mean, the park and rec meetings are open to the public, too. No one ever comes to them, so. Now, 
Now they, can I jump around to back to this big meeting that you want to have with we want to help with everybody? Uh -huh. um, is there a time you had said about in the new year where you sort of redefined the goals for the city? Is that something that is done in the new year? Well, I mean, one of the things I wanted to, you know, I, I was going to talk about is I wanted your input as to what committees we should have in the upcoming year. Um, because I don't feel like, I don't know, we're getting much committee work done. Maybe it's because we don't know what we're supposed to be doing in the committees, I don't know. Um, well, the uh, entertainment committee or whatever. The, the events committee the event committee seems to be, you know, you guys, I mean, you Alan, guys, Alan and the chamber have done it all. Yeah, but at least there was stuff going on. I mean, yeah. like, well, yeah. I mean, I, and I don't know. Um, I still think we need a parking study done, but I don't know if that's something that a parking committee needs to do, or if we need to get someone in from the outside to do it. I think I think we need to look at our rates, how we structure parking. I, I, I just, you know, I, I don't know. I, that's my thought. I don't know what you guys think. Um, I'm open for suggestions. Whatever, what you know, what do you, what do you guys want to see? You don't have to answer me now. Think about it, because we're going to reorganize in a couple weeks, and uh, and I still, I still like the idea of having committees. The difference with a small council, like in the old days when they had the big council, you could have, you know, three or four people on a committee, and didn't have to worry about, you know, sunshine law stuff. Now you can only have three, and and at, at most. Um, and then, 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 the, then the mayor can't participate because then it becomes a quorum. So, so some sometimes you can just have two. So I mean, the, obviously the finance committee and the personnel committee need to be. And and sometimes you know the finance committee is mostly only active during the budget time, and personnel committee is mostly <coughs> only active when we have personnel related issues. And fortunately, we don't have a lot of those all the time. Sometimes it comes and goes. Um, but you know. I think there needs to be, you know, a public safety committee, but I think that some goals and objectives for those committees need to be determined, and I think that's up to us to determine what we want them to be. Um, so, has any any municipality ever done a study to see how they could eliminate paid parking? I had asked Wayne last year to do like just a, 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 a short analysis of parking revenue, um, what would happen, you know, based on, you know, take, if, if we did, if we eliminated the parking and had free parking, what's the revenue loss when we figure out the cost, you know, the cost of, of having parking? Um, we make it up. Huh? Well, yeah, that's the big question. But you know, yeah, I mean, the, the, the issue is, you know how much, you know what your cost is for your meter attendant. Costs and benefits are there, so that's you know that that cost goes away. Um, what we don't look at is the and the other surrounding costs around it, tickets and stuff like that. But the bottom line is, even in a very short study, there's there's it's definitely going to be detrimental to us financially to do to do away with parking because we've got a, a big bond issue for the parking garage. Um, I also think so yeah I don't know I think there was a parking study done a couple of years ago when Alex was here but I don't know where there was all the back there. before we when we ran into the first issues with the parking garage we did that yeah, whether that it was feasible. Was Oh, sham. Yeah. Yeah. Never yeah. even talked to me about parking. Right, yeah, they never talked to Jim. Well, that was still when Rick was here? They just did their little um, shit ass study. Florida, I didn't talk to anybody in town. Uh, well, I don't know where the results of that thing are, but I. I um, that wasn't the same one we had where we had that. That was a different one, I think. I well, know, about 12 grand. Yeah. Well, we gotta go. We'll look for that one. Look for the results of that. I'm sure there was a report yeah, that was not right around people. Thank you. You're right. Okay. So, anyways, um, I, I just think something needs to be done there. Um, there was something else I was thinking about too. Oh, and then you know, I also think we need to be thinking about, um, you know, 
January 15th, the Casella Square Latrobe opens and we're losing. It's going to be a big sucking sound out of downtown. Um, so not only are we losing <coughs> the, those doctors, not all of them are moving, but a significant number of them are. We're going to lose that EIT tax too. So um, from those people that are no longer working in the city. So we're going to need to figure out well, number one, what's that kind of, you know, what's the, really what is the revenue loss there? And, uh, and then what? And, and how, what are we going to do to, to, you know, fill up those buildings and regenerate interest? Um, I will tell you that, um, I can't remember the date now. It was December 14th. We had the ribbon cutting for the incubator. I think you guys were all invited, but I know it was in the morning. So I know that's hard for some people to get to. But it was really, really, we had like 50 some people there. Um, Patrack was there and Ted Copas and um, a lot of um, Bill Thompson from Workforce Development. And there was just a really good turnout and a lot of excitement and enthusiasm around it. They have one. They have one occupant already, and I think they're readying two offices for two other occupants. But I don't know what they are. With the goal of, you know, giving them six to nine months in the incubator at, at low, low to no rent, depending on the issue, and then, you know, relocating them into downtown um, once they've had a chance to establish their business. Um, so it was really kind of a pretty cool thing to to be a part of and to have in downtown. Um, I think the last, I think we had an incubator one time over at uh, the old WCCC building, didn't we? Do you remember, Jim? You're probably the only one that's been around here long enough to remember that. You, Jim Kelly, would remember. Over the old yeah, metal have. building. Yeah, and that's got to be 20 years ago, maybe? Easily. Yeah. Easily. So was it successful? I don't remember. I really don't. Yeah, just the, I don't remember. Um, I wasn't that engaged in it then, but, um, but uh, some some municipalities have, have found it to be successful, so I guess it just depends, so we'll just have to see what happens. Um, What's going on with that cabaret theater? Was there a fire I don't know. No, there. <laughs> I don't know. They're trying to get their sprinkler system in place. Well, and that's really the last stumbling block that they have is getting a sprinkler system in. So I know that's what they're trying to do. Okay, I just got an email from Carousel. Oh, did you? Like just now? Like, oh. uh, like a couple of days ago. Oh, okay. From like. <laughs> All right. So he says we they've had our architectural drawings approved. Our understanding is that the next step is for the city to assess a fee, and once paid, we will be issued a building permit. I haven't had a chance to read this. I should probably forward this on to maybe you or Wayne. Uh, yeah, I, I send it to Wayne and Ann. They said that all the time. Yeah, I've been hearing. I think I've been hearing that for a long time. But um, yeah, I send it. I, I send it to Ann and and uh, Wayne. Oh yeah. They said they need the permit in order to complete funding application. Hello. Yeah, we've been doing stuff. Still regarding that. Still regarding that. Three times a day. Sorry. Okay. So what we decide on anything more? Huh? Lots of rides. Lots of rides. Lots of rides. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a open to suggestions. I mean, whatever you guys think, you know, we should be looking at as far as committees are concerned. Um, off the subject, Rosie. Jim, do you think Officer Dirk could bring the dog one night? I know he did that when Rocky first came aboard. I remember he hit something somewhere in the golf pond. Oh, that was fun, yeah. I thought so when I saw the pictures. Yeah. I 
was like, wow, that's kind of amazing. All right, nothing else? We'll see you on the 8th. <laughs> see you next year. I will tell you that. Oh, yeah.